All right, finally, I'll do the FOC video that everybody's been asking about. I don't know how many times and how many questions I've had about FOC. So we'll go over FOC and my thoughts about FOC in this video. You're watching the Jake Minsky YouTube channel. So, FOC, what does it stand for? Depends on who you ask, but essentially it's front of center or forward of center balance, whatever you want to call it. There's another way you can uh, also describe it, which I'll tell you later in the video. But essentially what FOC is, is telling you what the balance point of the arrow is. Okay, so you find it like this with your finger. And once the arrow is fully fletched up and built, of course. All right, that's about the balance point right about there. And so now you take this balance point and you run it through a calculation compared to the total length of the arrow. And you then find the front of center, because if this is the center of the arrow, where the balance is in the arrow itself. That's what FOC stands for, front of center balance, or whatever you want to call it. Before we calculate the FOC on this arrow, I want to talk about why FOC is relevant to you as an archer and why it's important. So if you have an arrow that has too high of an FOC and you don't have enough vein on it, enough drag in the back half, the arrow can fly erratically. And the opposite is also true. Too low of an FOC, and or too much drag on the back of the arrow can also cause a problem. An arrow is a projectile, and as it's flying down range, depending on the drag that the arrow has and the balance of the arrow, it affects the flight of the arrow. You know, a 10,000 foot overview as to what too much FOC with not enough vein would do would be instead of the arrow coming from, you know, this side of the frame to that side of the frame flying like an arrow, like a dart, like that, it would essentially fly like this where the point would be low, below the knock itself, which is called blading. Where the point is so heavy and the veins are not dragging enough to also balance it out to make it fly straight, it literally just flies like this in air. Now the opposite of not enough FOC or too much drag on the back could make the arrow, again, instead of flying like an arrow, it would fly either like this, where the knock is too low, or it could also fly like this, like a corkscrew, down towards the target. So too much drag with not enough weight in the point makes the arrow fly erratic. Too much point weight with not enough drag makes the arrow fly erratic. The right kind of balance makes the arrow fly true. So that's essentially what it is in a nutshell. Now FOC is discussed in percentage. From a 10,000 foot overview, from the center of the arrow to wherever the balance point is, it's measured in percent. A higher percentage FOC means that the arrow balances further towards the point. A lower number means it balances further towards the center line. You'll never want to shoot an arrow that has zero FOC, meaning it balances right on the middle or behind the center line. It's always going to be in front. Generally, if you're pulling an arrow off the shelf and any point off the shelf and you glue them together and put any fletchings on, no matter what, your FOC is going to be forward of center. It's never going to be in the middle and it's never, absolutely never going to be behind. It's just the way it is, so you don't really have to worry about that stuff. All you really have to worry about is, are your arrows flying decent or not? And if they're flying okay, then you have a fine FOC. If they're not flying okay, then you need to work on your FOC. Now, full disclosure. And I'm just going to be bluntly honest with you guys. I don't do FOC. I don't care about FOC. Doesn't matter to me. I just make my arrows tune and shoot them. And if they shoot good, they shoot good. Great. Sounds like a plan. But um, part of that reason is I asked Jay Bars, Olympic gold medalist, hey, um, how do you feel about FOC? What do you think about FOC? And what he responded with was first a question, what is FOC? And I said, well, it's front of center balance. And he said, wrong. It's overcomplicated and I said oh okay and I was like care to elaborate he's like no if you're using a standard arrow with a standard point especially with the Eason X10 because that's what everybody shoots outside at a high, at the highest level mostly um, you shoot the standard point in the standard arrow you have an FOC that's just fine do the arrow shoot tens yes well then your FOC is fine oh okay sounds like a plan thanks He's like, no, honestly, seriously, spend way more time shooting, practice more, get your technique down. The arrow FOC means nothing literally to your scores and your chances to medal. So I'm like, great, sounds like a plan, thanks. So that's why I have not really made this video. 
is because I don't care about it. I don't measure it. I literally measured FOC for the first time in maybe 2020, maybe 2019. I, I literally, I have shot at high levels for a couple decades and never measured FOC until somebody continually kept asking online, hey, what FOC, what FOC, what FOC? I don't know, 100 grain tungsten point in my X10. That's it, that's what, that's what I shoot, period, end of story. Now, part of my problem here is that I've always shot a standard arrow setup. I've always shot an arrow out of the box, off the shelf, and just used it, right? With the exception of indoors, and then I just shoot really heavy points to break the spine down, but I shoot giant feathers anyway, and it's 20 yards, so it doesn't really matter, and the arrows shoot just fine. So I've never shot like a non-standard setup as far as like, this is an Easton arrow. I, I was under contract with Easton basically my whole career with the exception of one tournament where I shot gold tip arrows. And because of that, I didn't really have access to high level, high performance arrows that are extremely lightweight, like some of the Victory Vaps and that kind of stuff with massively different weight ranges and points. Because they go from just about anywhere from about 60 grains up to like 140 grains as far as what's available on the market these days. And that's a massive range of adjustment Plus that arrow weighs almost nothing as far as the actual raw shaft is concerned. So if you put 140 grains on the end of that arrow, that's a huge FOC. Now, the FOC that I actually calculated on this X10 here behind me is 12.5%. Do with that what you will, but that is the best shooting arrow that I could possibly build and shoot outside at 70 meters. I've adjusted and changed the point weights several different times, going from 120 to 100 grains. The 100 grains just flat out outshot the 120 and 110s, so I ran the 100s. Now, there's no 90 grain tungsten point available for an Easton X10, at least to my knowledge, so I've never tried the 90s. Would it shoot better? I have no idea, but people already have a hard time keeping those 100 grain tungstens glued into the front of their X10s anyway, so I never bothered to try to find some 90s or 95s or whatever it is. So, Now, like I said, does it matter? I don't know. I'm not sure. I think it matters if you're outside of the range of norms. Now, if you're actually interested in calculating your FOC, I will have links in the description below where you can find FOC calculators. Essentially what you do is you take a tape measure and you measure from the groove of the knock where the string would push against the arrow to the end of the shaft. And then you balance the arrow and find the balancing point you have. And then you measure from that point back to the groove of the knock. You input the numbers in the calculator, you hit go, and it spits out your FOC percentage. So, roughly, if you're anywhere in the 10 to 14% range, you're fine. You don't need to change a thing. Uh, hunters, they like to shoot a little bit more FOC for various reasons, but for tournament archery, somewhere in that 8 to 14% range, especially if you're shooting outside, you're going to be fine. Indoors, you can get away with a lot more because the arrow is shooting and, and uh, traveling such a short distance. It doesn't really matter. So like I said, FOC for me, not very important. To some people, it means a lot and it's like the keystone in their whole archery thing that they do. Now, do I think you should have that uh, amount of uh, importance set to FOC? Personally, no, I don't think so. Because if you're, you're using a standard arrow with a standard point, it's gonna be fine. It'll shoot just fine, and it won't be the thing that's holding you back. In general, that is always the case, um, because you know usually it's technique, how much time behind the bow you've spent, or other factors that cause you to not hit the target you're going for, or to not shoot the scores you're really going for. So, moral of the story is, FOC stands for <laughs> overcomplicated, and it just doesn't matter.